Global warming is bringing increasingly wet weather with intense rainfall and rapid runoff. But are we prepared for the coming storms? Every time it rains, our drainage systems are increasingly put to the test. The old systems were designed to gather up the flow as quickly as possible, to take it away as fast as possible. Well, we know that the systems that we've got in place now don't work. Paved areas, roads and car parks distort the natural drainage patterns and reduce infiltration into the ground. Rainwater that would recharge groundwater or form ponds or wetlands is now washed directly to watercourses. Over the last century, it's estimated that we've lost 75% of our ponds and the wildlife that depends on them. Waterways are now rarely a feature of the townscape. Our drains and sewers have become the ideal home for millions of brown rats, but are a poor habitat for any other form of wildlife. Hard, impermeable urban surfaces create dangerous flash floods. To move ever greater amounts of urban stormwater, we've built ever larger ugly concrete culverts that make attractive, dangerous playgrounds for inquisitive youngsters. To keep them out, we've had to build expensive, heavy grills that can block with debris and need regular cleaning and maintenance. But adventurous youngsters will always find a way in, sometimes only to find themselves trapped at the other end. There have been several incidents where the emergency services have had to be called to the rescue. Few really understand the risks, but flash floods pose a serious danger to maintenance teams as well as children. Anyone near a culvert can be hit by a sudden wall of water almost without warning. The problems of all this extra water are often simply moved downstream, causing flooding elsewhere, eroding riverbanks, causing a build-up of sediments and damaging wildlife habitats. In turn, this means more maintenance work, flood defence and channel clearing, extra cost for something which is not sustainable. The drainage systems themselves can also have a serious effect on river water quality. A dual sewer system causes confusion. Discharges that should go to foul sewer, but instead are wrongly connected to storm drains, are common. Periods of dry weather create a build-up of contaminants from traffic and other sources that can be suddenly flushed into rivers by summer storms, causing severe pollution. These pollutants include metals, oils and dust from vehicles, effluent from factory yards, dog fouling and rotting organic matter. Washed off every road and pavement in even a small town, it adds up to tons of potentially toxic sediment that can kill life in the river, reduce the quality of amenities and damage habitats. It's estimated that 20% of poor river water quality is caused by diffuse pollution from urban runoff. In some areas, it may account for half the pollution in the river. Neither are our traditional drainage systems very good at dealing with accidental spills, which can rapidly find their way to a watercourse or seep down to contaminate groundwater. And when it isn't flushed into rivers or the ground, all this pollution ends up in gully pots. These have had to be incorporated to prevent the drainage system silting up. But they often block, flooding carriageways, and require constant and expensive maintenance. And then there's the cost and problem of disposing of the sediment. Gully pots also contribute to the destruction of wildlife in unseen ways. Newts and froglets fall down the gullies in great numbers during spawning season. 
Unable to climb out, they starve or are poisoned in the sticky mire below. With many millions of gully pots in service, the unseen impact on our wildlife is devastating. This newt and an emaciated frog were rescued in time. But the same survey found 17 dead newts in a few gully pots on a single street in a single day. Limitations of sewer capacity and pollution from storm overflows can restrict urban development and regeneration. For example, where the foul sewer still has to carry storm water in what are known as combined systems, increasing storm overflows to water courses to accommodate greater populations are simply unacceptable because of the pollution caused when raw sewage is washed into rivers during heavy weather. Victorian engineering has left us with an unsustainable legacy. How can we overcome these problems? Part of the answer is to be found by taking a look at a simple change that has occurred in the last few decades. Because virtually all our sewer systems were once combined, with a single drain to carry both rainwater and sewage, our approach to stormwater has been the same as it is for fowl to get rid of it as fast as possible. But now that much of our drainage systems are separate, foul sewers for wastewater and storm drains for surface water runoff, we have an opportunity to rethink our attitude to urban development. We can use water in a more imaginative way, one that will enhance our urban areas and improve property values while at the same time reducing many of the problems. Instead of the Victorian philosophy of trying to conquer nature, we should consider a more sustainable approach of imitating natural processes. The new methods are known as SUDS, Sustainable Urban Drainage Systems. The SUDS approach is to look at water in the urban environment from a completely different viewpoint. Instead of hiding water underground or behind concrete walls and channels, it brings it back into the community and considers all the aspects of amenity, flooding, pollution, wildlife habitats, landscape design, safety and water resources in a single integrated perspective. <laughs> 